Welcome to Pop Culture Retro, which was recently voted the 15th best podcast by the residents of the Golden Years Retirement Community in Boca Raton, Florida. Each show, we'll revisit some of your favorite pop culture memories with insider and outsider perspectives. Now, please help me welcome your hosts, Ike Eisenman and Jonathan Rosen. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Pop Culture Retro. I'm one of your hosts, Jonathan Rosen, along with Ike Eisenman, and today we are thrilled to welcome the star of a show that I absolutely loved growing up, Shazam. Please help us welcome Michael Gray. Michael, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Well, well to start with, from what I was reading, you grew up in Florida, you know, from where we are, and uh, you originally had no desire to go into acting, and it kind of came about almost accidentally. Uh, how did that happen? You're right. It's interesting. One day I was playing volleyball at my junior high school in the backyard in the sports area. And some lady walked up to me. I don't know who she was. And she said, are you an actor? Would you consider being an actor? I said, I never thought about it. <laughs> Later on that day, my parents got a phone call. She asked the other people there, what are his parents' names, phone numbers, that they gave it to her. She called my father and my mother and said, I'm an agent in Miami Beach, and I want your son to be an actor. I think he'd be good. See if he'd like to join us. So my parents said, Michael, do you want to be an actor? I said, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Why not? I'll try it. It should be fun. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> That's how it started. So I went to the community playhouse in Miami Beach, did two plays the first day. Then I talked to one of the drama school acting teachers, junior high school and high school. And they told me, yes, join community theater, do local theater shows, join our classes. And then when you graduate high school, either go to the American Academy in New York or hmm. Pasadena Playhouse in Pasadena, California and become an actor. So I picked Pasadena Playhouse. I joined it when I graduated high school, long time ago, and I studied for three years. As soon as I graduated in 1968, I started working immediately. I was very lucky. That's incredible. I played with um, <laughs> Leanne Ames and Lorene Tuttle called Life with Father. I played their son huh. in the play with Ben Murphy. He played my other brother. Oh, okay. I had an agent saw the play and asked if I'd like to really be serious about this i'm really concerned about being a professional actor i said yes so she said join my agency so i did so everything she sent me out on i got every single part she sent me out on i was very lucky very lucky i got them all that that, that is amazing because it's always i mean let alone being a young person getting into the business is one thing but but then also trying to get an agent and all that is another and that was going to be one of our questions how did you get an agent who 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 represented you back then i'm just curious it was 52 years ago i don't remember her name <laughs> oh that's okay it, I, I just didn't know if it was like a bigger agency or or you know one i might have been familiar with but that is more than fair <laughs> I, was being, I was with her for a long time then i joined icm ah yeah okay they were okay. a big agency i was with yeah. them for a while but i left them too and i went to somebody else yeah. Yeah, well well for your you, you looked at your imdb you know for your first role you got into the pilot episode of room 222 Starring yes. Lloyd Haynes, Michael Constantine, Denise Nicholas, and Karen Valentine. That was great. That was my first part, Room 222. The partner with me, a guy named Keone Young. He was a good actor, passing in Playhouse, and he was in Room 222 in the pilot, too. So I was happy to be working with him again. That was nice. Very nice. Wow. Well, I mean, you only had a chance to appear in the pilot, but was there some part of you that was hoping, hoping to be a series regular? Yeah, I really want to be a series regular. I was thinking, this is great. My first part, I'm in a series. <laughs> Actually, I signed a contract with the studio for quite a few years, but unfortunately, I only ended up on the pilot. That was it. They wrote my character out. And, and so right after, that's when you you were in uh, The Flying Nun with Sally Field. Yes. Uh, that, right. So that was that has already been in its third season, and Sally Field had already been like a star so, you know, you, Room 222, you appeared in the pilot episode, but now you were in a well-established show and popular one. So was, is there any, like, any intimidation that comes to play when you're already, like, you know, a show that you, you had probably previously watched? 
I wasn't intimidated. I was shocked. <laughs> 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 you work with someone like that, a huge star it was really cool. Well, it, it, for sure. I mean, I totally, I totally get that and can relate to it. Trust me. Um, but did you um, have any interactions with Sally Field off camera? What was she like? No, not really off camera. We didn't communicate that much. It was just great mm -hmm. working with her on the set, on the camera. It was great. That's a that's a good que question because you you always wonder if the stars are like what they appear on uh, <laughs> off camera as well. Yeah, some but, actors I've worked with a lot of big actors, a lot of big celebrities. Some of them are very humble, kind and considerate, like Shelley. All oh, right, I mean, like Sally Field, school. Shelley Fabre too. When I worked with her on Little People, but some of them are very humble and nice, which was nice. Some are not. You know, <laughs> Any you kid her name? <laughs> so, <laughs> not the ones that were not. I want to say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak, speaking of little people, right, which became the Ryan Keith show. So, when you were on, how did you get involved in that? How did how did you come to wind up on that show? That was pretty cool. Really, my agency said Warner Brothers wants to talk to you about being in a TV series called Little People. So, I went to Warner Brothers Studios and I auditioned for the part. And I was lucky I got the part. They said, we're going to fly you to Hawaii to shoot it. So they did. They flew me to Hawaii. I was there for six months. Did 26 episodes the first season. Working with Shelly Fairbray, who I had a crush on when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was great working with her. And Brian Keith was right. amazing. And we were lucky, too. We had some really cool guest stars that came on the show, too. But after the first season, they wrote my character out. So... That was the end of my career, I thought, and then I got lucky doing Shazam. Well, what what was Brian Keith like? Because he seems to me to be someone like Sally Field, who would just be a really kind person. Was he um, like his on on uh, on camera personality? Yeah, he was very cool. I was totally thrilled to be working with Brian Keith because he was a huge actor. Mm -hmm. I was very impressed to be working with him. It was great. So what? Now you said now you were written out of the show, you said. Now, were you given any reason why? Yeah. There was a political problem, which I, I don't want to get into. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, it's not like that doesn't ever happen in Hollywood, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't like saying negative things, so I'll just keep it to sure. myself. Oh, no, that's perfectly, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. But it's also terribly disappointing. Yeah. So I mean, you know, after you left the show, could you even bring yourself to, to, to watch it anymore? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Then I, got, I was able to work with a big celebrity named Burt Reynolds, which is very cool. 1970, Burt Reynolds was in a TV movie of the week called Run, Simon, Run. And I was cast as his brother by Aaron Spelling, which is oh, really very cool. cool. That's Burt Reynolds' movie. That's what started my career as a teenage idol in Tiger Bean Fave magazines. <laughs> it was all because Little People TV series. I mean, Run, Simon, Run, the movie of the week. And, and how was Reynolds? How was, what was Burt Reynolds like? Amazing. He was so nice. He was so humble. He was so cool to work with. It was just a small part, but I played his mm -hmm. brother and it was really cool. So a lot of kids saw it on TV and contacted Tiger Beat <laughs> and said, who's Michael Gray? We just saw him play Burt Reynolds' brother in a movie of the week called Run, Simon, Run. So Tiger Beat contacted my agency and said, please send Michael Gray in. We want to do an audition with him. So I did. I went in, they did an interview and a photo session with me. They started running pictures of me. So the kids that liked Tiger, that liked Run, Simon, Run, who read Tiger Beat every single month, liked the interview and liked the photo session. So they started doing bigger interviews and big photo sessions. And I was ended up on the front cover. Hmm. And that's especially after the Little People TV series, I was really on the front cover of so many different teenage magazines. And then with Shazam too. Well, so what's it, what's it like to be all of a sudden now you're, you're, you're acting, now you're on the cover of, teen magazines over what's it like just to see yourself out of the newsstands it was fun sometimes and sometimes it wasn't for example <laughs> so many kids read it and a lot of them found out where i lived i don't know how they found that out 
to the retirement. I lived in a, in a security building in West Hollywood. They had security agents downstairs in the lobby. And sometimes they would call my apartment room upstairs and say, Michael, don't come downstairs. There's dozens of kids outside waiting in the driveway to see you. So I said, okay, I didn't go downstairs. And one day, <clears throat> excuse me, a drink of water. One sure. day, the people from Tiger Beat said, Michael, we're going to the forum in Inglewood to watch the Osmonds perform. You want to go with? I said, of course I do. I'd like to go see them. I love the Osmonds, mm -hmm. especially because I got to meet Donnie when I was doing photographs with the little people. So oh, I went wow. to the forum. So I walked in the forum with a couple people from Tiger Beat down to our seat, about third or fourth row from the center, right off the stage. And as I started getting closer and closer to my seat, so many kids saw me <laughs> and started running up and screaming, there is Michael Gray. They started grabbing my clothes, pulling out of my shirt, trying oh, to pull my. pieces of my hair out of my head. So the security agents at the forum saw that pushed the kids away from me, picked me up and threw me in a broom closet. <laughs> and I was in a broom closet for the whole performance. I never yeah. got a chance to see it. Well, unfortunately, that was a bummer. I didn't get to see the Osmonds perform because I was in a broom closet with some brooms and mops. For a few <laughs> could hours. you hear them? Could you hear them? I could hear them, but I couldn't see them. <laughs> oh, so that's God. why sometimes it wasn't fun. Being oh, man. <laughs> Well, well, speaking of teen idols, okay, so you appeared on that show, the Davy Jones special, Pop. Uh, it it yes. only aired one, right, it only aired once, and you can't find, like, barely any clips of it on YouTube at all. And I wish you could, because I would have loved that show. Uh, besides you, you, yeah. you mentioned the Osmonds, Mike Curb Congregation as well. So what are your memories of that show? Was it something that the network pushed you to be in, or, you know, how did you get involved in that? The Pop was amazing. Davy Jones was the host of the show, and I had recorded some songs. Mm -hmm. I was taking voice lessons, and I recorded songs in a recording studio in West Hollywood. Because being a teenage idol, I was doing TV shows. They wanted me to become a singer, too. Of course. So I went on to do the show with Davy, and I sang two of my songs on the show, and Davy and I became buddies. Oh, really? He was a mm -hmm. very, very, very nice guy. He really was. Talk about being impressed. I'm sitting there hanging out with Davy Jones doing your show. That was great. And then you were also on the Brady Bunch during its final season. And it, it's amazing yeah. that you only appeared once, but so many people remember your episode, you know, probably because you played Marsha's boyfriend. Was yes. it, uh, how special was that to uh, appear on such an iconic show? That was pretty special too, because they called my agency and said, would Michael like to come on and play Marsha's boyfriend? An episode of Brady Bunch. So they asked me if I want to do it. I said, of course. So I went out to the studio. I shot it. It was great. Especially working with Maureen McCormick was fantastic. And meeting the other cast members. It was great. I loved doing it. And it was fun because she squirted me with cream because I was cheating on her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched cream. that episode last night. To watch. Yeah, she said, you want whipped cream on your ice cream? I said, sure. <laughs> She put whipped cream all over my chest. <laughs> <laughs> no, so okay, so I I, ha I have to ask this now. Was, was there any dating Maureen McCormick off screen? No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Had to I ask. Wanted, no, it didn't <laughs> happen. <laughs> now, so now, so you started mentioning a little bit. You now, so how did you ultimately get involved with Shazam? How did that happen? How did you get into? that, you know, cast for the role, was there a big audition process? There was actually no audition. Formation Studios called my agency. Wow. And said, would Michael consider coming out and talking to us about playing Billy Batson on the Shazam TV series? So I said, of course. So I drove out to Formation Studios. I walked into the office and Les Tremaine was sitting in the office. Hmm. And I went, oh my gosh, Les Tremaine, talk about a legend. Right. <laughs> so they said, Michael Les Tremaine, he's playing mentor on um, Little People. I mean, on Shazam. He's playing them, not the Little People. He's playing right. mentor on Shazam. And then I met Jackson Boswick, too. He was playing Captain Marvel. 
So they cast me in the part. I didn't even audition for it. it That's great. incredible. You, you yeah, had a very I'm, charmed I'm, life. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard not to hate you right now, but um, I'll I'll do my best. <laughs> well, the show so, definitely had some big differences than um, than the comic. Was that ever discussed? Yes. Ah. <laughs> what What was it? What, I mean, had you been a fan of the comics? I read the comics when I was a kid. But the show, it was much better. We even had a psychiatrist on the set to make sure everything was done properly. Everything was done properly. In what way? It was a very, everything on the show. We did things, every episode had so many different effects in it to make sure everything was appropriate. Nothing was said, there's any immoral, everything was morality. There was no immorality on the show at all. Right. Well, they, they always gave that lesson at the end, the moral of uh, the story. Yeah, at the end of each show, it was usually one of the, one of the guys that played Captain Marvel, Jackson Bostrick or John Davey, they did an episode, every single episode they did, they did a little immorality story afterwards. I was lucky to do a couple of them. Mm -hmm. the guys that played Captain Marvel did one every episode. Did, did DC Comics get involved in the show at all? Did they have, like, did they, like, put their say in? Yeah. Uh, what well, like what type of things did they want uh, to make sure were done? I honestly don't remember. My mm -hmm. memory's not great anymore. I'm not a kid <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, you know, at that point you had already appeared in a lot of shows, but when Shazam came on, did your life change in any way? Because now you're headlining a series. Did you did you start getting recognized a lot more? Yes, definitely. Because now I was doing a show for three years. Better than the little people is only one year, and I was doing it working regular. So you, I mean, could you go out? Could you go out on the street at all <laughs> anymore? It was a little more difficult at that point too. A little. Sure. <laughs> Even I go to store sometimes, and people would scream, "Look, there's Michael Gray, there's Billy Batson." <laughs> well, and it's I funny because it was great. Well, after Shazam, uh, I don't know. If that's one was curious. DC made comic made changes to the comics based on your show did you know did you did you notice that did anyone notice that in the show i heard about it yes so interesting i think that's that, that rarely ever happens you know out there so it's amazing that the show would have such an influence over the comic itself but you mentioned les tremaine what was your uh, relationship like with him great he and i became best friends literally les was so much older than me but he and I became really, really good friends. Even after we finished shooting the show, we got together a lot. We had dinner many times. I went oh, to his nice. house, hung out with him and his wife. And then one day I invited him up. I was staying in my parents' house up in Carmel, California for a few years. And I invited him up for a Christmas dinner. So he and his wife drove up to Carmel. I told my mom and dad, I got special friends coming over for, for Christmas dinner. And they said, who? I said, Les Tremaine and his wife, Joni. <laughs> and my mother and father said, you're kidding. Because they used to watch Les Tremaine years ago in movies, and they listened to him on the radio. Before there were movies and TV shows, he was a big radio star. They were sure. so cool when he walked in. Les was a mensch. He was a nice, nice guy. <laughs> he really was. He seemed it. That's his wife. Now, after the second season, you know, Jackson Bostwick, who you mentioned, is out of the show and John Davey comes in. So was the rest of the cast surprised at, or given any reason? I mean, what were your thoughts at the time? Was, was there some sort of worry that if someone is getting recast that this could happen to anyone? We were a little concerned. We didn't know what was going on. What happened, what we saw happen, Jackson did a, a stunt and he hmm. flew through the air supposedly to land as Captain Marvel, and he landed on a bunch of um, cardboard boxes to protect himself. But supposedly he got hurt. So the story was supposedly he went to a doctor that night or the next morning and didn't show up on, the, on set the next day. So the producers said they thought he didn't come back because he wanted some change in his contract. So that's one of the reasons they would let him go. So Jackson was upset about that because their opinion and his opinion were two different stories about what had happened to him. Mm -hmm. So 
Les and I were sitting on the set that morning when Jackson didn't show up, but all of a sudden the limousine pulled up and out of it walked John Davy. Wow. And everybody said, this is the new Captain Marvel, John Davy. Mm. So we said, oh, nice to meet you. Hello, how are you? He was a nice guy, but like working with him. So John and I became friends and he's a good friend to have. He's an ex-Marine and he was an ex heavyweight prize fighter. <laughs> so you don't mess with someone like that. <laughs> Plus he's Captain Marvel, so I'm glad he's my friend. And a triple threat so there. Enemy. You still keep in contact he with John? Really you still keep in contact? Sorry? You still keep in contact? Yeah, John and I do quite a few Comic Cons quite often, mm -hmm. and we're very good friends. We, we talk about once a week. He's oh, a nice, great. nice guy. He really is. Very nice. Mm. So we're doing a Comic Con in August. We're going to do the next one. We haven't done one in several months. We're doing one in August together. We're looking forward to doing it. Where's that one at? That one's going to be in Santa Clara, California. It's called oh, the Bay nice. Area Toy Expo. Well, so and also around that time, they started pushing the, the, the Shazam and the ISIS shows together. So for many episodes. So be, besides getting to see, you know, Joanna Cameron often, which was good, was there was there any resentment though that you had to like start now sharing, you know, shows with another cast from a, from their show? No resentment at all. No, mm -hmm. I got to do a couple episodes of ISIS, uh, but John did quite a few with her, right? And Jackson did a couple also before he left. But it was fun, and Joanna Cameron was very nice. The whole cast was mm -hmm. very nice. They really were. Hmm. No, see, that was that was such a fun show as well. Yeah. It was fun working with them. It was a fun show. Mm -hmm. Well, when the show was canceled, did they give you any reason? Were were you at all surprised, or did you see it coming? We heard rumors one of the reasons it was canceled because they couldn't afford to shoot it anymore. Hmm. And that's not because we were making too much money. Hmm. The actors they just supposedly ran out of money somehow, and that's why they canceled it. Unfortunately, because I love doing it. I would have done yeah. it for years, for years, literally. Yeah, and well, if you answer my next question, we you know, wanted to see how you, you felt about that, if you were disappointed or ready to move on, but, you know. I was very disappointed. Yeah, yeah. So, did, did, want to check, did, did you manage to keep any props from the set? Just my Shazam shirt. This is a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one to no keep. Props. Just a Shazam shirt, <laughs> which I wear when I do Comic-Cons. Oh, that's so cool. That was the original. I also wore it when I did Shazam Fear the God's movie. We're going to ask about that. Yes. We're, well, yeah, we're, we're going to come back to the movie in a second. But I did want to talk about a couple of other roles that, uh, that you had. And I want to start with Archer. You were hysterical in Archer. I, it's so funny. You were playing like a, a fictionalized version of yourself. That, how did that come about? Yeah, that's how I played TV's Michael Grant on Archer. Right. Yes. <laughs> What happened, my son was watching an episode of Archer, and he called me and said, Michael, they just mentioned your name on Archer. I said, really? He said, yeah, Archer was lying out by the pool, and he had some memory issues. So we asked him if he was by the pool with his mother. I think it was with his mother. I'm not sure. Maybe it was his wife. And he said, what was the guy's name that played Billy Batson in Archer? So she said to him, Michael Gray. He said, oh, that's right. It was Michael Gray. So my son called me and told me that. So I contacted Adam Reed, who created Archer. I found out who his agency was or his manager, whichever it was, I contacted him. And I said, I wanna thank Adam for doing that for me. So I ended up talking to Adam Reed. I said, Adam, thank you very much for talking about, have, having Archer talking about me on an episode. He said, would you like to do one? I said, I would love it. So he did, he passed me. <laughs> in two matching episodes back in um i think it was 2019 or 2015 that's when we did the first two episodes then I did two more after that so it was fun i like doing it it was a lot of fun doing voiceover work <laughs> And TV's Michael Gray. Well, I know, like I said, it was it was hysterical. I, I watched all the episodes again, uh, leading up to you coming on, and it, it just made me laugh. So many of the lines that you had in there. So yeah, especially yeah. the first the Drastic Voyage, Part One and Part Two. <laughs> yeah. They were fun. Yeah, 
Then I did well, one called Robert De Niro, where I played Archer's attorney. <laughs> yes. Well, another another show that you were on that I was a big fan of was Comic Book Men. And I loved when you showed up, you know. So how did you come to appear in that show? Did they reach out to you to come down? Had they you did. known they about the show? And... Yes, they reached out to me and said, would you like to do an episode of Comic Book Man? Fly to New Jersey to do it. I said, of course. So they did. They flew me to New Jersey. I got to do it. It was fun working with all of them. And then when I got on the set, the entire cast was wearing Billy Bastion shirts. <laughs> it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Ming did Chen. you know about the show ahead of time? Did you had you been had you watched the show at all beforehand or no? I hadn't. You hadn't. No. Mm. But I'm glad I did it. It was fun working with them. It really was. It was a great episode. It was a lot of fun. And yes, it was. They're all wearing captain. They're all wearing Billy Batson costumes. It was very <laughs> fun too. Well, I, I know you recently appeared. You just started mentioning it about the uh, Shazam sequel. You know, Fury of the Gods, and it was so yeah. incredible getting to see you in that. Uh, I had such a big smile on my face. So when you showed up, so you weren't in the first film. Had you been asked at all to be in it? Because I, I remember thinking at the time that, you know, you should be in there. So many Shazam TV series fans wanted me to be in Shazam, yes. the first Shazam episode, the first Shazam one movie. They wanted me to be in it, but I wasn't asked. And then Shazam for the Gods, I was offered a cameo in it. And I was so thrilled because it's second generation of Shazam. I was so thrilled to be able to do this. It was great, especially working with Zachary Levi. He was so nice. Talk about a humble, very cool guy. And about four years before that, I did a Comic-Con called Denver Pop Culture Con. And Zachary Levi and Asher Angel were both there too. So I got oh, to meet them and hang out with them. And they liked meeting me and I liked meeting them, I'm talking about two generations just as am. Sure. It was very cool. Then I got to work with Zachary and Shazam Fear the Gods. Unfortunately, A Asher wasn't there. And Asher, I'm short. Asher was like six foot tall or something like that, even his age. <laughs> <laughs> what what did you think of the movie? There, no, so, so you got to, I, I remember when uh, Zachary posted that uh, picture on Instagram with, um, and on Twitter with, with, with you on there. So how long were you on the set for when you were filming that? I was on the set for two days. Two days? And working with Zachary was amazing. He was such a nice, humble, considerate, kind guy. He really was. Mm. I working with him. And he did a great job. He did the special it, effects were fantastic in the movie. I loved it. Mm. Oh, you might, yeah, I was just because you answered my next question. What did you think of their version? I thought it was great. Yeah. I really did. They did a great job. Well, was it surreal to revisit the character after so many years? Well, it was surreal, but it was like the old days, working back in the 60s and 70s. Everything was so professional, working on the set. The crew was great. The cast was great. The location set was great. It was fantastic. It was like the old days. I loved it. And I told <laughs> all the executives that. This is like working back in the old days. Everything is just so classic. I loved it. It was fantastic. Oh, if, there, if there's another one, would you be willing to appear in it if there's going to be a third? Of course. That's great. So, <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do it again. Yeah. So you mentioned you mentioned fan conventions a little bit. So no, so where will you be appearing next? The one in August is the next one that you're in. Or are there any before then? The one I mentioned in Santa Clara. Right. Yeah, that's the that's the first one I'm doing. It's in August. The fans all over the country are asking me to do comic cons in their cities because of it's fan fear the guys movie. <laughs> Well, are there any Florida appearances on the schedule? I'm hoping so. I did Pensacon, Pensacola, Florida, mm -hmm. right before the virus hit. And I want to do more in Florida because I grew up there. So back in the, when I was doing Shazam, I was doing auto shows before there were car shows. Right. I did an auto show in Miami Beach, which is really amazing where I grew up. So, so many people showed up that I went to high school with and my neighbors oh, wow. too. No, I, I hope you do a South Florida convention. That's that's where I'm I'm near there, so I would love to go to that one. <laughs> so. That'd be fun too. I like to Orlando. When I did when I after I did Pensacon, my wife and I went to Orlando just to hang out for a few days, and a lot of people in Orlando said we want to meet you there too. Hmm. So, but I prefer Miami Beach because I grew up there. Of course. 
Well, how can people follow you on social media? Well, um, it's Michael, it's Michael Gray Shazam, or TV is Michael Gray, or Michael Billy Bass and Gray on Facebook. <laughs> uh, on Twitter, I'm Michael, it's called Michael Gray, TV is Michael Gray, number one, like Archer, that's what they call me, TV is Michael Gray. <laughs> Twitter, it's TV is Michael Gray, number one. On Instagram, it's Michael Gray Shazam. On Facebook, it's Michael Gray Shazam and Michael Billy Bass and Gray. So I promote, whenever I'm doing a Comic-Con, I'll promote it all over those. People come see me and visit. They want to meet me. Of and I course. love meeting people at Comic-Cons. I love it because I love meeting my fans. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have done all the things I was doing. Well, I'm curious now, going back to Shazam, do you, do you have a particular favorite episode? I loved every episode. Every one? Every episode. It was so much fun working with all those people. Jackson, maybe Les Tremaine, it was, and all the amazing guest celebrities we had on too. It was wonderful. Do you, uh, do you ever get to go back? Do you ever go back and watch the shows again? I have them all on DVD, so I do watch them. So, yeah. what goes through your mind, and what 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 memories stand out to you? Everything. I mean, even Dabs Greer did an episode. He was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Look at Dabs Greer. And everything about Les Tremaine was wonderful. He had a great sense of humor. He was so funny. He never didn't know what he was going to do on an episode. He was so great. Oh, no, Michael, we th thank you so much for joining us today. We, it was look we were look really looking forward to this. It was such a pleasure to get to talk to you. He said, I was a big Shazam fan growing up and uh, loved watching the show. And I, I, got, I was so happy to get to revisit the shows, you know, in anticipation of you coming on and getting to see all of them again. Thank you for having me on both of you. I loved it. It was a great, I love doing podcasts, especially with people like you guys. No, I appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you so much. I, well, yeah. again, this, this has been Pop Culture Retro. I'm Jonathan Rosen with Ike Eisenman. And again, a very special thanks to Michael Gray. And please subscribe. Thank you for listening to Pop Culture Retro, where no one was hurt during the making of this podcast.